time for a new episode of Bid Nerd, your daily nerd out on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiasts, auction sites. My name is JP. Welcome to the program along with my partner, Michael Deeb in San Francisco. What's going on, Michael Deeb? What's up, JP? Getting excited for Luftgekult? I am. I've got my producer, uh, Patootie, working hard here today. She's got her uh, Bid Nerd's bow on and she's... I can see that. Studio. She's like... Don't we're doing yeah. a show. We're live. We're on air. We're recording. Yeah, um, we're recording. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am excited about Luftkult. Uh, we're getting closer to kind of shoring up all the plans and uh, did, figuring out. Who's did you from Vegas? Did you pick a car? Because both your cars got accepted. Now you have to actually pick one. Are you taking the the back date, or are you gonna I'm, I'm are you gonna back date. buckle? Yeah, that you was are? the one yeah. that uh, that I planned. And uh, yeah, yeah, I would rather bring the convertible, but. Um, no, here's the thing. It's uh, did you see what's up? So for those of you who don't know, Luftkult, Luftkult is like the biggest Porsche mecca event <laughs> of the year. Uh, it moves around the country, some even the world. Like they had one in Germany once, um, yeah. or was it London? I don't know. Can't remember. London, London, so, yeah, Indianapolis and London. Yeah. Um. So here it is. It's going to be in San Francisco for the first time. Your neck of the woods, Michael D. Yeah. Uh, is hosting a bunch of events. Um. So, yeah, uh, it's a two-day event, unlike that's the one of the other big differences. Usually it's only one day. And the second day they're adding water pumpers. Um, right. And it looks to me like like they may be having some trouble getting that <laughs> show filled because I had registered uh, my car for Saturday for the show, uh, yeah. but I didn't register it for Sunday because I figured we'd get on the road. I didn't want to be committed to being there all day. Um, but then they sent out a thing, you know, but I did buy, uh, just admission passes just to get in. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they sent out an email to everyone who had an admission pass that said, Hey, if you also have a Porsche air or water, you can have it in the show on Sunday. Um, yeah. at no additional charge. So I was like, mm, all right, cool. Well, that gives me a parking spot. So I don't have to worry about it. And the show's over by one. So that's fine. Uh, so yeah, so my car is registered for both days now. And, uh, and, uh, well, you know, I, just I, so what I, cause I don't have a long commute home on mm -hmm. Sunday. So I, when I got accepted, they, they send you the thing, like, you, you know, you have to pay or whatever. I don't know. So I registered my car for Sunday and paid for the display on Sunday as well. So I got an email and they refunded that 50 bucks back to me, mm. which I thought was really interesting. Mm. So yeah, um, it definitely feels like the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing over at Luftukult. This um, rollout for this event, while we understand that they try to keep a lot of the details secret, um, the emails have been confusing to say the least. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then when they go and, and like charge you money and then a week later go, that's all right, we're going to just do it for free. Here's your money back. I'm like, well, it doesn't sit like, like I don't want to go to a show that's that poorly produced. You know yeah, what I mean? Like it just yeah. sounds, sounds silly. It, what's, what's amazing, John, and in, the only reason this is interesting because this is what we try to bring to the show is stuff that's interesting, is you and I had a blast going to Luft to Cold 6. Um, which was at Universal Studios back lot. And and you and I will talk about it going down as one of the greatest car shows of all time because it was just so epic. It was such a perfect backdrop. And um, and some of the way the cars were displayed and, and the idea that it was like kept a secret and that we were doing it there, it was just this coup that was just fantastic. And and as we were leaving and, and like basking in the afterglow of going to the show and seeing all these cool people and all these cool cars in such a cool place, how do they top that? Well, they haven't been able to do it yet. Every show since has been like, what? like this is really put on by the same guys that had that epic show because this feels like, you know, a bunch of monkeys trying to screw a football, you know, <laughs> like it's just, it just really weird. I mean, you got to look, you know, obviously history happened. Um, you know, that show yeah. Luft six was in 2019 and then obviously yep. things got messed up. I think the, the, there was that show that was supposed to be in North Carolina. There were cross country rallies. Uh, we were going to have a blast. I was, yeah, there was, that was yeah. shaping up to be like the most epic experience ever. Uh, and of course history happened and everything got screwed up uh, for 2020. Um, and yeah. then they tried to come back in 2021 by doing that kind of show kind of as an afterthought in, in Indianapolis, which was a nice show, but it was just a nice car show. It wasn't really loose. It, 
Um, it feels like, yeah, it feels like Porsche really pulled the strings on that one. Yeah, because they wanted something to go along with their sports car together thing. Um, yeah. And then, you know, last, so then, you know, then Luft uh, 8 wasn't yeah. in the spring like it usually is. They had it in fall like the, like Luft 7 was in India. It, so it was just, it just all felt weird. Well, and, they, and it was they went to a venue that they'd done before. It, Right, and that yeah. that was super. And so you're thinking, oh well, if they're going to do it at the exact same place, then how are they going to turn up the wick? And I don't think they did at all. I think it was yeah. it was right on par with when they did it at four or five or whenever they were there. Uh, they yeah. were there at four. Lou Four was there. In their defense, they did do the first two at, in the same place, you know, at Dayos or whatever. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. not totally but unprecedented that, for them to do it in the same place. But two. Was but those events didn't. One. Yeah. Yeah, but those two those two events didn't sell out either. They were just, you know, their yeah. little thing. Yeah. yeah. So here it is. Uh, this event's going to be really big. It looks like they got a huge venue, so they can include more people because they're tired of people like me, uh, you know, <laughs> bitching about not being accepted. Uh, we have Patrick Long on Dur or Die. Check out our one of our other you know yeah. channels, the Dur or Die Porsche Podcast channel. Uh, Patrick Long actually came on the show and uh, listened to our BS uh, gripes, and uh, he was a really good and, sport about uh-huh. it. And I'm just paraphrasing John, but you basically you said to him, "Look, we didn't want you to take everybody. We just wanted you to take us." Yeah, just uh, that was it. Just a couple more, which is us and, and everybody you else. You didn't have to whore yourself out too. like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Whatever. You know, we run here in Las Vegas. We do the uh, Vegas Auto Fest every year. Um, mm-hmm. You know, and that show we we've had. Th- there's been numerous times where people have talked about. You know, should we do a two day event? Should we do something on Friday? Should we do something on Sunday and stuff like that? And anytime you try to do extra stuff, you wind up diluting the main the main event. Yep. Um, yep. And, and you spread yourself too thin. You try. So we're just like, no, don't do that. Um, and the, the Las Vegas Concours, which is just a, an absolute embarrassment of a car show in Las Vegas, do not get duped into coming to the Vegas Concour, Las Vegas Concours. Come to Vegas Auto Fest. That's the real enthusiast car show. Thousands of people show up to this amazing venue out on the Red Rock. Yeah, Club. Red Rocks. Yeah, Red Rocks, such a beautiful gorgeous. backdrop yeah. for that. It's unbelievable. Yeah. The, the Las Vegas Concours can never kind of figure out what venue they're going to do. And it's always like just the people that brought their car. It's just stupid. Right. But they always try to do all these other things. And it's just embarrassing because you go to any of their stuff and it's like there's eight people. It's just like, guys, what are you doing? That's that's worse than the subscriber count to bid nerds. I mean, um, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, here it is. Uh, I, we're excited about Luftgold. We're excited about going um, this year. I hope the second day event uh, works. I doubt that they'll ever do a second day again unless it just winds up going off the hook but who knows we're going to go to both see what they're both like i'm sure both days are going to be fun and they're going to be unique experiences and i look forward to it and everything yeah we'll we'll report back to you guys but you guys should come out for the show it'll be really fun and let us know if you are because we'd love to have you drive with us on friday all right let's get to the darn car we're talking about a car on p car market our favorite platform if you're if you've ever watched Mm. the show you know how much we dislike the practices of p car market but p car market has been bringing some big numbers on some cars they've been getting some some Really surprising results. Um, today's car will be an interesting to one to watch because I feel like the results that they've gotten on some cars have been really blue chip cars. This car is not. This is a neat car, but certainly not a blue chip car. Uh, Michael, do you tell us what the most interesting car is? P-Car Market has for our enjoyment this 2002 Porsche 996 Carrera Coupe. Uh, what makes this car cool is it has the factory aero kit. Uh, which is really nice. Being a 2002, it's also what we would refer to internally as a dot two. So it's got the uh, slightly more powerful motor with about 320 horsepower. It is a six-speed manual, and it is showing just 46,000 original miles offered for sale or for auction out of Longwood, Florida. Um, Longwood, God, how is that not a porn name? That is fantastic. I can't believe I didn't think of that first. Um, JP, you had a cool car very similar to this. Uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. Yours was an earlier car. It was a dot one. It was the dark gray color. And um, you actually had, I mean, rather than just like an aero kit, your car was like a real GT3 replica right down to the wheels. And if I remember correctly, JP, didn't your speedometer or tachometer actually say GT3 on it? Like your car really would have fooled some people the way it was yeah, so no, set up. Well- I mean, not to take, not to go away from this car, but just real quick. No, mine was a dot yeah. two, and it was the same color. It was the steel gray. Um, oh yeah, so mine was steel gray. This one, steel gray, like Arctic. Yeah, but no, mine yeah. was a dot two, three point six. Oh, you, 
Uh, oh, okay, so, got it. Yeah, and it had all all the, the GT3 trim. This is just just has the wing and the aero kit from what I can see. Right, right. Yeah, it has standard seats. It's In fact, it's the, uh, what do they call that, luxury tufted leather, supple leather, supple Porsche leather. calls it. Ugh. Ball supple sack leather. Yeah. Ball sack. Anyway, um, uh, anyways, advanced Technic package, uh, six disc changer, by Zen and headlights, and I don't know, whatever, not, not much to it. The IMS was done, and the receipt for the work is done there. Um, I will commend a golf clap to P car market for stating that the IMS was done in the first paragraph instead of waiting for making people who are interested going and looking through all the comments to see if anybody had asked the seller yet, because P car market tends to like duck and hide when it comes to IMS bearings on cars that require them. This one was done. It was done in 2021. So it's recent and by all accounts, um, you know, should be in really good condition. Interesting to note, JP, um, somebody asked the seller to confirm that the clutch was done at the same time as the IMS, and the seller says that he has no way to confirm that. It's not written in the receipt, so he will not say that this guy's got a new clutch. Um, that's kind of uncommon, is it not, that you would change the IMS and not just do the clutch while you're in there? Is that fair to say? Um, well, I mean, it's usually the other way around. What usually happens is it's time for a clutch. And since you're in there, you go ahead and change the IMS bearing um, because yeah. it's, you know, it's just an additional $500 part at that point. Um, yeah. It's the same job. Transmission's got to come out all that's the, you know, the shaft bearing, all that stuff. So yeah, do it when you do the, uh, clutch. yeah, I, I don't know why, but at 40 something thousand miles, it does seem like you're going through that much work. It costs you about the same amount of, it would cost you an extra, you know, 1500 bucks or whatever to go ahead and throw, slap the clutch. Because now the thing's going to have to come apart in another couple, you know, 10, 15,000 miles anyway. So, Which is why they were asking. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was interesting. They couldn't confirm that the clutch was done. It's, the receipt doesn't have it on there. The other thing that I thought was really funny is the guys at P-Car Market would well, tell you that second. they're – Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I, and, and I'm sorry to cut you off there. No, but go ahead. It's such a weird response. I can't conf – I'm going to say I can't confirm because the receipt doesn't say – that it did. That sounds so PCAR market because, well, <laughs> yeah. are you implying that maybe it was? There's no expectation that it would or wouldn't have been. How much was the job? You know, what is the, yeah. if you've got a receipt, if it's a $2,000 job, okay, you know, they didn't. If it's a $3,500 job, okay, well, why is it $1,500 more? Because it has a clutch. I mean, you can't confirm and what are we doing here? What kind of games are we playing? This is so P car market. Golly. I'm going to hold on. I'm going to pause. Um, yeah. I don't know what kind of games uh, good old P car market is playing, but it's, it's typical for P car market to have these weird things. I'm sorry. Continue talking about the car. It's a nice looking car though. Yeah. So then the other thing that I thought was really interesting is the P car market guys would tell you that they're hardcore Porsche guys. Um, and they kept calling these 18 inch, uh, light alloy Carrera wheels. Um, they're MYO2s, and I feel like anybody knows that. That's what that model of, of wheel is. Um, and it just cracks me up that they, they didn't, like, P-Car Market edited this thing and published it and didn't tell you. So even if the seller doesn't know, you would think the guys at P-Car Market would know those are MYO2s, and they just write it in there. BAT would do that. Yeah. But uh, they did not list these as MYO2s. Those wheels with the aero kit on this car make the car look fantastic the car has kind of a finished look um i think the car maybe should be a little lower that'd be really cool i know that's what you would do to the car uh but it's the car is a looker it's got low miles it's got an ims bearing i think it should do really well don't you john don't you think this car should do really well yeah i mean but it's yeah it's a cool car i like it and yeah this is definitely yeah. a cool looking 996 this is kind of the way you want to do it um the myo2 is a great wheel uh, it's a very lightweight wheel, um, and but you know, honestly, with the Aero Kit, go get a, a set of GT3 wheels if you can find them. That would really yeah. look good. Yeah, um, they're you know more expensive, but they yeah, they are a lot more expensive. It's true. You can find yeah. MYO2 wheels pretty inexpensively. I don't know. I'm just really, really bearish on the M96 engine. It's such a piece of glass. Um, it they are prone to failure in so many ways, even when the IMS bearing has been replaced. I <laughs> don't know. I'll say it right here. I don't know if I'll ever own another 996 again. I have been so lucky. I have owned so <laughs> many. 
Um, but you just see over and over and over again M96 engines failing. There was one, uh, they had a PCA DE day, you know, driver education day up at the Spring Mountain uh, just uh, a couple of weeks ago. It wasn't a 996, it was actually a, um, a Cayman, but same engine, same powertrain. And, you know, it blew an engine on the track. I mean, it's just like every time you go to an event, an M96 engine gives up. <laughs> you know, it's like it's wow. just not that uncommon our good friend buddha fa- friends of the show he had his m96 ims bearing upgraded and it failed um so he's on the second one and uh, you know knock on wood this is going to be the good one his car is going to last forever um but it, it just it's just terrifying i'm just not i can't do it um i love the m i, I love the 996.2 i think it's such a great driving car when they work but when they but they just fail so big um that it's just not worth the heartache interesting so jp our car closes tomorrow on p car market and it is currently sitting at try not to laugh or spit into your microphone 996 dollars on just one bid and it closes in less than 24 hours how crazy is that um i think this is a thirty thousand dollar car but there is something weird going on here you know what i mean so i'm just gonna not I don't. I mean, I, I just don't want to bet against the platform every single time we bid. This is a, this should be a thirty thousand dollar car, um, since the IMS has been addressed and it's got the aero kit, and it's low miles, and it looks good. I, I think that this car should be worth that much even on this platform. So I'm going to say thirty thousand dollars, even though there isn't a shred of evidence to suggest that we're going to get anywhere near that number. Um, it's looking like it's going to peter out at 20 grand and wind them in the deal tank for 40. But uh, I'm going to give you 30 grand because I just think that's what the car is worth. And I'm going to just sort of push the platform and its inability to even give this consigner any sleepless nights this week. You know what I mean? Like, unbelievable. So, what do you think is going, going on? Going on? That is weird. One right? sub $1,000 bid with less than 24 yeah. hours to go. It's in Florida. Uh, we love yep. our Florida friends, but we don't particularly like cars from Florida. That's always an issue. But it looks like this car was in Alaska or something before. Um, mm-hmm. But there's Cosmoline is still underneath the car. When you were running through the pictures, you can yeah. see all the Cosmoline is still under the car. I think this car, I, you know, I think this car should hold up. I don't know. It's had the right maintenance. It doesn't, I mean, do, is there an accident on the Carfax? Did, did we check? That? There isn't. They did mention that they repainted one of the quarter, one of the rear panels. That's the only thing is they mentioned they did some little bit of paint work, but nothing, anything that was uh, accident related. Wow. That is a head scratcher. What do you guys think out there? Uh, this is where we go out to the nerd nation. What are we missing on this listing that we're less than 24 hours away and it hasn't even reached a thousand dollars. This should be a 30 something thousand dollar car. Your bid was 30 deep. Yeah. I'm just giving it to you at 30 grand. Yeah. I, you know, geez. Um, 27 grand, 27. All right. Uh, $27,000 I mean, less than 50,000 miles. Uh, this is a really cool car. This would be a lot of fun. I, yes, I'm scared of all the M96 stuff, but I mean, at under thirty thousand dollars, it's almost like, well, all right. I mean, if it blows up, it blows up. Life goes on. Uh, this is this is going to be such a great driver, and you can't get a real GT3 996 for oh. Oh, geez, they're you know well over a hundred thousand. If you if this were yeah. a 996 GT3 with forty six thousand miles on it, this would be a, what a hundred twenty thousand dollar car. Would it not? Yeah, th- yeah, three. Well, at least I mean, hundred grand, so it'd be three to three to four times the number. Yeah, yeah so I mean, yeah. it's bonkers. All right, well, let's uh, let's see what's going on. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the future and find out what happens with this nine nine six. What is happening, guys? <laughs> Hey guys, I got to tell you about our friends God and Porsche of Las Vegas and God and Classic. If you're looking for a new Porsche or a classic, you've got to call our friend Steve at God and this guy. 1989 linen gray metallic G50 cab. Is that going to be for sale? It is going to be for sale. Uh, the car only has 65,000 miles. On Save it. yourself the hassle of screwing around with all the auctions like we always talk about and just talk to Steve. He'll find you the classic Porsche you're looking for, Gun Porsche of Las Vegas. If you love watching car videos on YouTube, you gotta check out my channel, The Raleigh Show. Oh, 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 oh,
this car. I am driving oh, that car. <laughs> Michael Deeb, are you excited about the latest episode of the Rami show? I got to tell you, so you um, you sent it to me, and I know it hasn't dropped yet, although by the time this airs, it's probably been dropped. Um, yeah. But uh, uh, Chef William uh, recently bought a car, and Rami gets to drive it in the episode, and the Rami's got a similar car and you guys go out in the desert. And I, when I watched that video, I have such incredible FOMO because I remember <laughs> me, you and Mikey going out in the morning and shooting all the cars from gone classic at red rock. And then we do the breakfast club stuff and we take the drives. So whenever I see you guys shooting out in the desert, I'm like, why do I live in this godforsaken city? Uh, but the video is fantastic. Rami's having a blast. Chef smiling. Uh, Mental was there. Lee Pettit, uh, Pettit was there. Uh, it looks just like you guys had a great time blasting across the desert in these two cool Porsches. Congratulations to Chef on his new car. Uh, the latest episode of the Rami Show is probably one of my favorites so far. That was a great, great, um, great show. Thanks for the plug there. That's uh, that's ni- that's a nice compliment from uh, Michael Deeb who. Um, you know, your car would look good next to those cars. You've got that wide body. I was thinking that, but, you know, mine is just normally aspirated. I don't think I'd be cool enough to join those kids, although I would tar- – you know I would try my hardest to keep up. Yeah, find a corner. Um, yeah. <laughs> so check out The Rami Show, guys, if you haven't already. And actually do yourself a, a favor and have even more fun. Go over to the Dirt or Die Porsche podcast. I know a lot of you guys have. Um, and uh, there's actually an episode up about um, – uh, where Chef talks about getting that car. Um, you know, yeah. that's our Porsche on podcast on BAT. He won an auction. Yeah. So he talks about the car and getting it and winning it, but he didn't actually receive it yet uh, in that podcast. And then in the on the Rami show, you get to actually see the car in action uh, and you see the picture. Does Chef, does Chef just sit back in the studio with like a rocks glass with some whiskey and a nice big ice cube in there and say, yeah, I kind of nailed it on this car. I learned everything about my auction prowess from watching the bid nerds. Does he get into he that? He does. The chef pretty much yeah, just shows good. up, brings food, and then <laughs> sits in some kind of like uh, carb coma or something like that. We, we, we're not, half the time we're not sure if he's awake. He's, he's always on a lot of painkillers. He's got a bad back. So, um, you know, combine yeah. that with some chicken wings and some liquor, some good scotch, and uh, that's about that. I think we finished off this bottle on the last episode. Yeah. So. I love that chef shows up to half the things still wearing a chef coat. Like, like, <laughs> did true. you leave, did you leave the risotto on? Like, what are you doing here? Who's watching the stove? You know what I mean? Like you always think like he's on borrowed time and he's got to run back and pull something out of the oven. He's always wearing his chef coat. I love that about him. That's the most chef thing about him. I don't think he actually cooks anything anymore. I think he just like wears the jacket around. <laughs> Um, yeah. All right. Well, you guys, thanks for sticking around. You guys are, uh, I'm sure, patiently waiting for the results on this uh, 996 over on our favorite platform. Uh, check out, by the way, check out our episode about PCAR Market uh, from a few days ago. Um, <laughs> that's a fun one. All right, Michael oh, D, man. let's get to the results of this uh, 996. What happened? Deal tank. Spoiler alert. All right. So our 2002 Porsche 996 with just uh, 40-something thousand miles and the aero kit. IMS bearing was done. It looks great on those MYO2s. John, um, we both like the car, although neither one of us would probably sincerely buy another kind of fragile 996 normally aspirated motor. But we were sort of betting against the platform. So I said 30 grand and said that I thought for sure it'd wind up at the deal tank. You took the under at $27,000 and agreed with me that you thought this car would wind up in the deal tank. We were both right and we were both wrong. The car was actually bid up to $36,000 where it failed to sell on 19 bids and remains, as we're doing this show a handful of days later, in the deal tank for $45,000. So my question to you, John, isn't about the result because I don't think you or I or anybody that watches this show with any regularity would be um, surprised by the result of this car on this platform. My question to you is really regarding um, the values of 996s. At $36,000, do you think that's what this car is worth? Or do you say because it's got relatively low miles at 46,000, it has an IMS bearing and a receipt for it being done in 2021. And the fact that it's a, a manual car with an aero kit, that that car is worth say 40, thousand dollars or more but my question to you john is at 36 grand should he have taken the money and ran um because like i said it's still sitting in the deal tank and he hasn't gotten a bid 
He hasn't gotten an offer over his 36 grand. Was that all the money is my question to you. My answer is yes. Uh, the guy should yeah. absolutely have taken the money and run. I don't think he That's gets any thought. more money for this car on BAT. I'm shocked it went up to 36, if I'm honest. Um, the You know, the aero kit, if it were factory installed, okay, you can make an argument that this car could be worth more. But it wasn't. This is something that was put on later. It's got the ball sack leather um, and, and, <laughs> and. I just think 996 is unlike uh, air-cooled Porsches. Air-cooled Porsches are still strong. We talk about this almost every episode. It sounds like a broken record, but right. you know, the, the non weird stuff, the, the factory cars or the stuff that has a cool name, uh, those cars or something, you know, stuff with really good build and engine builds. Um, those cars are still commanding some pretty big premiums. Um, but everything else, um, water pumper Porsches are definitely feeling it. Um, you know, our good friend, uh, Jason Alter, uh, who owns both a 964 and a 991.1 GTS. So he has two fantastic cars. Um, unfortunately, his 964 has been in the shop for a year. Uh, whole other story. Hurry up! Uh, but, you know, he's kind of bummed because he drives that uh, GTS 991. He loves the car. Um, but because his 964 has been in the shop so long for so long, he's wound up putting way more miles on the GTS, whereas he would have been putting all those miles on the 964. You know, putting miles on an air-cooled 911 just doesn't seem to matter uh, from a no. value point of, or, point of view, especially 964. So now he's stacking miles on his GTS, and, uh, you know... It's he a was depreciating watching, asset. It's big time. You know, yeah. there was one on BAT, bl a black one, just like his. His is black on black, center cat, you know, center locks the whole nine yards, you know, and it had fewer miles, and it, it, it failed to sell at 85 on Saturday. Now, that was a Saturday result, and Saturday results may vary, so, you know, be careful. Um, but I think that is, uh, that is telling, that the air-cooled air market is still doing something because there's kind of intrinsic collector value in those cars. But everything else that's a regular car, if your car can fit cleanly in an NADA book, um, if your car is something <laughs> that um, CarMax would buy, your car is a car that probably... Uh, is going to be seeing some severe depreciation or is really going to get hurt by inflation. So uh, something to think yeah, about. Something a, to think about. It's a really good, really good point, John. I, I look for weird cars all the time, like on AutoTrader, and I, and I save those cars. And as we rolled into April just a couple of weeks ago, um, several of the cars that I've been watching, all I got emails that there were price reductions on, like, I kid you not, John, like eight or nine cars, and I'm watching – let's say 18 cars. So like almost half the cars I'm watching cut a price reduction at the beginning of the month, which means the dealerships um, or even the sale, the people who are selling them private party are like, I got to lower the price or I'm not going to, this car's not going anywhere. I'm not yeah. getting any, like I'm hearing crickets. So it's happening. It's we're, we're in it right now. And uh, yeah, I, I didn't think this car was worth over 40. Um, so at 36, I was like kind of scratching my head going, why didn't he take the 36? And so I wanted to hear your take on that. And I really appreciate your take. Cause I agree with you on, on that whole thing. He, he should have he, that it not taking the money is not going to age well for him because it's not going to sell in the deal tank. This is a $26,000 car, not a $36,000 car. It's just, no. not. I mean, even, even with inflation, the way it is, the nine, nine sixes are just so sketchy. Yes. We've seen appreciation on them. Yes. But you know, it's more inflation rather than appreciation. So, um, buy a nine, nine six, uh, at your peril. I mean, I love them, still love them, would still kind of love to have this car, but you know, it, only if you can afford to lose the money because uh, that thing could blow up at any moment and <laughs> might just do that. Um, uh, plus, rough. got having to deal with the PCAR market thing, you know, you know, you got to wonder uh, how aggressive the phone calls were because, you know, PCAR market may be sketchy. Um, they may pull some fast ones. They you look, you know, check into PCAR market if you're going to do business with those guys. Um, but one thing that we know about them, I mean, let's face it, they're not stupid. Uh, they know how much this car is worth, so they let the guy set a unrealistically uh, high, um, you know, call it a reserve. And you know, right. when it got to thirty six, they were probably hitting him up, going, "Dude, sell it." Yeah, you know, I got a guy, you know, it's, it's just 
it's crazy that the person didn't actually listen to himself. But uh, anyways, Mem- what do you remember? Mean? Remember Eddie Murphy? Remember Eddie Murphy in Trading Places? Sell Mortimer, sell. You know. <laughs> Yeah, only you don't get a uh, topless Jamie Lee Curtis as a uh, concession on uh, on this hey fail to sell. Um, all right, what do you guys think of the results of this nine nine six failure to sell? Will it make forty five thousand dollars in the deal tank product? It's a product. We saw we saw <laughs> yeah. we saw the P car markets guys describe the deal tank as a product. It's a product. product. Do, you, do you remember? Yeah. It's so boomer. Do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> you're old enough. I, I mean, I, I make fun of boomers, but I'm boomer adjacent, right? Do you remember 20 years ago when there was that guy on TV, when there were still TV commercials, he would come on late night and he'd, uh, and all the fringe TV, com- he, he would sell that, like how to use the internet, you know, and oh, it was a no. CD, you know, it was a CD ROMs <laughs> like buy my product. He was clearly talking to boomers and old people, you know, oh, had my no God. idea how to get so online. Funny. And it was like a right. whole bunch of DVDs. It, anytime someone calls a, uh, digital feature, a product, a product. Like, yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so cringe over there. Jesus. Get those words!